Welcome to Little Steps Big Gains in episode three of the DIY OT Tools mini series, The Ribbon Ruler. In this video, I'm gonna show you a bedside tool that can be used for four standardized tests and over 15 treatment interventions just using a ribbon. To make a ribbon ruler, find a ribbon and cut it 10 feet long. From there, grab a ruler and a Sharpie and on one end, go ahead and mark 24 inches. Standardized test number one, the functional reach. The functional reach is a really common standardized test that's used to quantify an individual's risk for falls. Now this is usually done standing at a wall with a ruler attached. That individual stands next to the wall with an outstretched arm. That is their starting position. We then have them reach as far as they can without altering their base of support. The change in measurement, that is their score. If it's less than six inches, it's usually a high risk for falls. More than 10, it's usually a low risk for falls. However, at a bedside exam, I don't exactly have a ruler on the wall. So what I often do is I use a piece of paper and mark that paper. Then I take out my ribbon ruler to measure their score. If you wanna learn more about this standardized test, check out a link in the description below. Standardized test number two, the tug. The tug stands for the timed up and go. It's a really common standardized test, often used by physical therapists, but we can collaborate with them to determine an individual's risk for falls. Now to do this test, the individual starts seated in a chair. We then time, right, say go, see how long it takes them to walk 10 feet at their normal pace, okay? Turn around, walk back and sit down. How do we know how far 10 feet is? Your ribbon ruler is 10 feet long. On average, if an individual takes more than around 14 seconds, that scores a risk for falls. Now the manual tug that can be done carrying a glass of water or the cognitive tug, this can be done through counting backwards by threes. If you want to learn more about this test, check out a link in the description below. Standardized test number three, the five times sit to stand. The five times sit to stand test is another test that can be great to quantify an individual's risk for falls, look at their transfers, balance, and strength. To do this test, you have an individual sit in a chair, their feet and their back is supported. We do want them to cross their arms and stand up and down five times all the way up, all the way down. We then time and get a score. In the description below, there will be normatives for community dwelling adults, Parkinson's, individuals such as stroke, vestibular deficits. But to do the test, you're really supposed to have them sit in a chair 17 to 18 inches high. So how do we know how high it is? Use that ribbon ruler to set up and get your score. Standardized test number four, the four square step test. The four square step test is a fantastic test. Looks at an individual's dynamic balance and their risk for falls. Now to do this test, you normally take four canes, placing them perpendicular on the ground, creating four squares. You then have that person start in square one, time. How long does it take for them to get to square two, three, four, one, and then back four, three, two, one, basically clockwise and counterclockwise. And then you have your score. Now I don't exactly carry four canes with me to my bedside exams. So that is where our ruler ribbon comes in. You can place that ribbon on the floor, creating that X. Then go ahead and use that to get your score. If you wanna get a visual on how you can set this up, check out a link in the description below. And then if you wanna learn more about this test, check out the link in the description below. Beyond those standardized tests, it's also so advantageous to have a ruler with you to be able to measure things like the height of a toilet, a chair, or the bed. So those are some great quantitative measurements. But what about treatment interventions? Well, here's a few to get you started. Sitting balance. For sitting balance, there's a lot of things we can do. We can do jump rope, okay? Take that ribbon around the head. Oh, work on your hip hiking, right? Get that ribbon all the way down over the feet again. Take that ribbon, have them hip hike 
pass it under as far as they can. All right, lean over and hip hike, pass it through. Go all the way through one side of the ribbon to the other. Foot loops, I love foot loops. Take that ribbon, create a loop. The smaller the loop is, the more difficult this is. But here's the challenge, have your patient, it's up to you. If you want them to do a figure four or lift their leg, their challenge is to get their foot all the way in that loop and all the way out. This is great for core uh, flexibility here and simulating the movement patterns, right? For lower body dressing. Standing balance, put that ribbon on the floor. If it's straight, you can have them balance like a balance beam either on or next to it based on the friction of the floor. Um, but you can also have them step over it sideways Keep that figure four stepping in all directions so good for balance and Parkinson's disease. You can then go ahead and put it like a squiggle in all directions, having them trace for turns. You can do clack stepping so good. Have them stand in the middle. Go ahead and put that ribbon in a circle on the floor and then give them some numbers like one o'clock and have them step forwards and backwards in all directions. Coordination. For coordination, there's a lot that you can do. You can take your ribbon and tie it onto something like a sock or anchor onto a washcloth or a towel and create a modified point, which is spinning. Uh, you can spin on one side, the other side. I like to spin while we walk or do sit the stands at the same time. So good. Uh, from here, you can roll the ribbon. You could do scissor climbing, pinching. You can tie, untie the ribbon. Those are a few ideas for coordination. And that is how you can use a ruler ribbon to help you with standardized tests and treatment interventions. If you found these helpful, please press like, subscribe, share with others. Come back, stay tuned for more episodes here on the DIY OT tools. Because as occupational therapists, we are in this together.